In this video we'll go over some different ionic compounds and, and how to figure out how two elements might form an ionic compound together. So I have potassium and bromine here. If we check out our periodic table, potassium here is in group 1A, so it's got a 4s1 valence electron. So it'll tend to make a plus one anion, or plus one ion rather. It's trying to give away that electron. And I have bromine, which is in the group 7A. So it actually just wants to gain one electron into its 4p. And so what'll happen is potassium will give up that electron to bromine. It makes both of them more stable. So you're going to get potassium plus one, and bromine minus one, and boom, you got potassium bromide. And the way to name these is you say the cation first, potassium, followed by the anion, bromine, but you kind of make that element's name into an ide. You add ide to the end. So instead of bromine, you go bromide. Bromide. That's potassium bromide. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, let's think about calcium and chlorine. Calcium is right here, so it's 4s2. So it would need to give two electrons up for it to get the electron configuration of argon, a noble gas, right? It has to get rid of these 4s2. And I had chlorine. And chlorine's here. And chlorine is in group 7A, so it, it only needs one electron. Okay. So what would happen, right, if calcium gave one electron to chlorine? Well, this would make chlorine really stable. But calcium would not be, right? Now calcium would just have, you know, it wouldn't have the electron configuration of a noble gas. It would still have this awkward S electron. So we can remedy this if we give it another chlorine atom. And now it has two electrons to give away. That'll give one to one chlorine atom and one to the other. That makes that calcium two plus, right? Now it has the electron configuration of a noble gas. Each chlorine has now gotten an extra electron. They both have the electron configuration of a noble gas. Okay, right? Positive and negative will attract. And now you have another ionic compound. And there's an ionic bond between the calcium and the chlorines. And this would be called CaCl2. Why? Because there's one calcium, so you don't write you don't need to write the one. But there are two chlorines that make this up. There, you need two chlorines for every calcium for this to work. So you write a subscript two here to say two chlorines. You would name this calcium. Again, you just say the name of the cation. And then it's chlorine for the anion, so you make that into an ide, chloride. Calcium chloride, CaCl2. Remember, so you need two chlorines per calcium because calcium has two electrons that it needs to give up, and chlorine both only want to accept one. What about aluminum and oxygen? Aluminum is here in group 3A, so it wants to give up its 3s2, 3p1 electron, so it has three electrons to give up, then it'll have a plus three charge. Oxygen is in group 6A, it wants to gain two electrons. To, to have the electron configuration of a noble gas, neon, which would make it really stable. So the aluminum wants to give up three, and the oxygen only wants to take two. Kind of weird, how, how can we get this to work? So what you need to do is find a common multiple. right? So we know that the aluminum wants to give three, and the oxygen wants to take two. So what's a way that we can get these to balance out? It's like, oh, the common multiple right, would be six. If I had two aluminums and three oxygens, the two aluminums together would want to give away six, and the three oxygens would want to take six. So that's what happens. We have aluminum, two aluminums, and three oxygens. This is aluminum oxide. 